You've probably been asked the decades-old question, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a noise? What if you applied that question, but instead travelled one million miles into the expanse of space, beyond the stars in our local solar system, towards the edge of the universe? The answer may never be known 100% for sure, but the theoretical issue at hand could probably be explained by one of the most famous movie poster taglines of all time, in space, no one can hear you scream. While the 1979 horror masterpiece, Alien, leans more on the fiction side of science fiction, its sentiments were actually correct. Sound isn't completely void in space, but in the vastly empty sectors of the observational universe, it's just not possible. Sound can only travel through the vibration amongst atoms in a channel, such as water or air. In many areas of the observable universe, there isn't even air to allow for these vibrations, making sound all but an idea. This phenomenon leads to the moments when we do discover sounds from space, all the more enthralling. From the red sand-filled valleys of Mars, to the radio wave-bouncing moons of Saturn, astronomers have long marvelled at the audioscapes of our universe, and what their sonifications might mean for space exploration. In July of 2020, NASA launched Perseverance, the newest car-sized investigative rover to be deployed on the surface of Mars. In February of the following year, the rover nicknamed Percy touched ground and never looked back, equipped with payload instruments and almost 20 cameras. It also journeyed to Mars with two commercial-grade microphones, the first of their kind to ever make their way through outer space. It didn't take long for NASA to tap into Percy's potential and listen in on the sounds of Mars. What they heard was nothing short of fascinating. Take a listen. This collection of sounds, such as wind across the horizon or Percy's own moving mechanism, gave researchers a much better window into how audio travels across Martian landscapes. It was previously thought that due to the drastic atmospheric differences between Mars and Earth, the high frequencies on Mars would be nearly undetectable and the sound itself would propagate at much shorter distances. However, when astronomers listened to the sounds of the Integrity helicopter whirring through Martian airspace, they realised audio waves do propagate at longer distances on Mars meaning sound travels much clearer over time than initially expected. While Percy never quite captured the sounds of a Martian alien or extraterrestrials burrowing beneath the rustic, terracotta-coloured rock, the new possibilities of farther sounds reaching the rover's microphones is very promising, in addition to better preparing NASA for in-person Mars exploration in the near future. Sticking to the sands of the Red Planet, there were actually other sounds recorded from Mars nearly two years before Percy's unique findings. These emitted from below the planet's crust, collected by another special robotic tool utilised by NASA, called InSight. InSight, an acronym for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy and Heat Transport, is a lander robot sent to Mars in May of 2018 to study the Red Planet's deep interior making landfall six months later in November of that year. A few months after placing its seismometer and collecting geological evolution data via heat transfer on the 128th day of exploration, InSight managed to record the first ever clear and concise Mars quake, a seismic event of similar magnitude to earthquakes here at home. Other Mars quakes had been identified prior to April of 2018, but with much more ambiguity and without the proper instrument to record their movements. The recording is a combination of three sounds, the Martian winds on the planet's surface, InSight's robotic arm movement, and the Mars quake's seismic noise translated through a vibration to sound mechanism. These vibrations have been sped up 60% to make their soundscapes audible for human hearing.
the result is absolutely mesmerising. If you were to approach a sound designer with a task to create a soundscape for what it might be like to live on a rocky planet and experience a seismic shift from within a rocket ship, this is probably close to what they'd come up with. If anything, it paints a picture for how vibrations and wavelengths transform to audio can teach us about cosmic environments and the nature of the planet's makeup. Similar to the seismic vibrations on Mars, astronomers have been transforming electromagnetic waves to audio waves since the 1970s to better illustrate how plasma frequencies interrupt magnetic fields. The tone of the plasma all depends on the density of its electrons and how strong the magnetic field is. These measurements then help scientists learn more about the plasma's properties and its purpose across the cosmos. One of the oldest plasma recordings turned to audio waves came in 1979, when Voyager 2, a space probe launched in 1977 to study interstellar space and the outer planets of our solar system, captured plasma as it travelled through the outer magnetosphere. high-pitched waves you can hear near the end are actually cosmic rays, influencing the density of the plasma from within the magnetosphere. Another eerily captured plasma wave was translated to audio by the like-named counterpart of Voyager 2, Voyager 1. These plasma recordings came from readings picked up by Voyager 1 in the autumn of 2012 and the spring of 2013 while studying the amplitude of ionised gas from deep interstellar space. The plasma waves almost sound like cosmic whistling after translation, making the imagination wonder what all the other recordings on Voyager 1 and 2 sound like all these years later. Other plasma recordings have piqued the interest of astronomers much closer to Earth as well. In 2012, NASA launched identical Van Allen probes, orbit spacecraft intended to study the radiation belt around the globe. With its electric and magnetic field instrument suite and integrated science instrument on board, the Van Allen probes quickly picked up plasma chorus waves at intermittent periods during its orbit. Here is a sample of one of those findings. A similar study to the Van Allen probe project predated the mission in 1996 when NASA launched the Global Geospace Science Satellite, called POLAR, to study the auroras at the polar ends of Earth also called the Polar Lights. Over its 12-year journey, Polar recorded many variations in plasma waves as it crossed through the magnetosphere. One specific hiss wave was translated to audio waves, and its auditory byproduct sounds quite familiar. Check it out. While some may claim the plasmospheric hiss sounds more like a half-man, half-android supervillain from a fictional galaxy far, far away, in reality, it poses as further proof that if sound could travel throughout the depths of space, it would echo like a galactic chorus, filling our ears like the crashing waves of our homeworld oceans. Taking a page from the plasma-oriented playbook of Voyager 1 and 2, NASA launched the Cassini-Huygens space probe in October of 1997 as a collaboration with Italy and the European Space Agency to better study and understand Saturn, its rings, and the satellite moons that complete the Saturn system. One of the more fascinating aspects discovered within the Saturnian airspace was its high volume of intense radio wave emissions found around the planet. These waves resemble the radio waves found in the auroras on Earth, the same plasma polar studied as previously mentioned. In April of 2002, 
Cassini recorded these radio waves, and NASA translated them to an audio file to better understand the changes in frequency and time across the auroras of Saturn. Take a listen. The previous clip has a runtime of 73 seconds, however those 73 seconds are actually recorded waves of 27 minutes. The change in timing stems from the frequencies of the radio waves being too high for audio frequencies detectable by the human ear, and were altered by a factor of 44. The final soundscape allowed astronomers to conclude that because of the wide range of frequencies, there must be multiple small radio sources travelling around the magnetic lines around Saturn's auroras. It's tempting to imagine what it would be like if the laws of physics allowed for sound to travel through space. If it did, close your eyes and think of these types of celestial screams permeating through the dark skies of the universe, like lonely creatures of the night calling out for someone, or something, to join them. The final sound is probably the farthest from the true definition of sound, But in a universe void of audio vibrations, it's the most breathtaking translation of the information we've gathered from deep within the cosmos. In the late 18th century, Charles Messier discovered what is colloquially known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, or Messier 51A, a name attributed to the swirling celestial body for the man who found it. Since that initial finding, astronomers from around the globe have studied the Whirlpool due to its similar structure to our own spiralling galaxy, the Milky Way. While the galaxy is 28 million light years from Earth, and 43% of the Milky Way's size, M51A posed as scientists best bet to ever studying a spiral from an outside perspective, as living in the midst of one made total observation impossible. To give a better representation of the Whirlpool's light waves, an X-ray telescope at NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory recorded a line emanating from the supermassive black hole at M51A's core, and scanned its spiral clockwise. These readings were then translated from light waves to audio waves, and the result is quite mystifying. What you hear are the brilliant light waves consistently emitted by the Whirlpool's black hole, creating a somplicated melody with the accents of other bright light sources from around the galaxy spiral. It's one of many X-ray readings turned soundscapes from across the greater universe, and while it might not be a true audio recording from deep within the cosmos, it is a unique and popularly utilised tool for astronomers to better understand how matter, frequencies, and radio waves travel about space. Who knows? Maybe one day the sonification of waves will help us communicate with something else out in the universe. Until then, we can at least enjoy the theoretical audio landscapes of the great beyond, and close our eyes and listen in as we travel through the stars above. Join us next week here on Access Astronomy for another video on the mysteries of the universe. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and check that bell icon so you don't miss an upload.